So we have nice big crack in this foundation wall, which is allowing water to seep in from the outside into what's going to be soon our finished area. And we can't have that happening. So we're going to try out this thing right here. It is a Simpson Strong, Strong Tie Crack Pack Flex H2O. Um, I have never used it before, but I thought uh, for our first time using it, might as well walk through what we're doing, show you how it's going, and then uh, hopefully in a few weeks, we get some rain or something, we could circle back and see how well it holds up. But I have read the instructions out loud to Andy as well. So we are now professionals. Uh, we have a two-part epoxy here, which we got to mix up first. Yep. But the instructions say not to mix all of it. You need to leave some behind in case there's a, a leak later on. Yes. So I heard that. You part. are listening. Okay. So Andy, let's divvy up this. Oh, and also don't worry. Uh, if it gets boring, it'll get a time lapse. It'll speed up. So we'll try to keep it exciting for you because this might take us a little bit. It's going to take us a little while. Part of the instructions is we're going to put in these little ports, epoxied on to the crack. So the opening in the port is right in the center of that crack there. But you're supposed to do it every eight inches, starting at the bottom, working your way to the top. So- we Started from the bottom, now we're here. Uh, we also read that the epoxy we are using, I just talked right through that one. I was gonna pretend like it ever happened. I know, that's fine, but I laughed. So I, <laughs> I forced the reaction. Uh, it sets up in five to eight minutes. So that's why we're gonna go ahead and mark every eight inches. So we know where to put these suckers so we don't end up with a whole bunch of hardened epoxy. Now we can start mixing up our epoxy, applying it to our little nipples? N nipples. Is that what you call these? Nope. Easy click injection ports. Injection ports, but technically I think it is actually a nipple. You start with all the ports open. Yep. Which is decompressed. Decompressed. Pulled this way is actually closed. Yeah. We so went yeah. through that and ensured all of them were open. Open. It feels backwards. It does feel backwards. Okay, okay. Now we're gonna dish out some epoxy. I think you should probably use about 80%, leave 20% behind for oopses. Because also we're going to use this epoxy for is not just attaching our little nipples to the wall. We're also going to use it to fill in the cracked surface after the nipples are all put on there. So you can't be too copious with it, but you got to be copious enough with it. That's going to be the tricky part, I think, is using the correct quantity. And then we're gonna team up on this so that way we make sure it doesn't dry on us as we're putting these nipples on. Andy, you can start at the bottom. I'll start at the top. Oh, but I'm still mixing. Okay, I think we're well mixed. Okay. It stays out here. None in there. None in there. Good thing we saved back 20%. Because uh, I imagine there might be some gaps here. There's going to be some gaps for sure. Um, also, thinking in hindsight, we probably sh should have mixed up like 20% to mount these guys with, mix up another set to then fill the gap with. Yeah. And not do it in one run. Because it won't create a reaction until you mix it? Yeah. Okay. That would have been. That's probably the better direction to go. Mm -hmm. Hey, but that's why we're doing this for you so if you guys are watching this now you know exactly a... second batch gonna fill in the little areas you missed on the first one because it's set way faster than i imagined okay so we have two coats of it on there uh, what we did is come back with a, another extra bit we mixed together because we ran out because it went 
hard so quickly. Um, and put a little extra coating over the top of each one of these little nipples to help hold it on there better. And it's not the most uh, beautiful work of art I've ever done. Yeah, if we were to do this again and it would be exposed, we would probably mix up smaller batches. Yes, do a lot of small little batches, but luckily this will all be covered up. So our main goal is just to make sure that none of our resin that we're gonna be mixing up next squirts out. Here we go. Screwing this into that. There we go. Rachi tightsy. Does this into that have any kind of the polyurethane crack sealer into the? And this is the blue stuff is your hardener. Hardener. You're curious what? That's what the, the blue stuff is. So also reading the instructions is pretty interesting. It looks like the tube itself isn't filled up all the way. For two reasons. One, it needs room for the hardener to go in there and actually fill it up. And there's also always going to be a little air bubble left in there. So when we're actually doing this and pushing into the wall, we're going to have this held upside down and the air bubble will be at the very top. So when you're injecting your resin in, that little air bubble is going to keep pressure there so you can get all of your resin out of the tube and out of the little straw that we're going to be using too. Okay, so when we pop this top and twist this knob, we have to put our cap on it, it's got a little cap, and shake. Very specifically, two shakes per second for two minutes, just like when you finish going to the bathroom. I don't think you, I think it's upside, I think it's like this. <laughs> well, that, that one, good. Yep. Professional. Wow. Okay, opening the valve. Pop the top. Is it right here, you think? Yep. Should just twist off. Sure did. Put the cap on. Well, while you're shaking that, I'll go over this little straw attachment here. So we put the little black tip on it so it doesn't squirt out while you're shaking it. We'll take that off and put on this little straw. And at the end of it has a little metal latch, which latches onto our little nipples. And we'll slowly inject our resin into the wall until the resin comes out the one directly above where you're squirting. So when it starts coming out the one above it, what you're gonna do is pull your little nipple, which shuts the flow off going in. Then we can unhook our little attachment here from the said nipple, move it to the one next up, and repeat all the way up the wall until we get to the very top one, which then you just close on the top one and hopefully everything has worked as it should. Squirt this all over you. So, just push it on, right? We'll see. Oh, it's clipped on. Open the valve. Let me see how thick this is. Oh, it's not very, it's pretty thin. In case you're curious what it looks like, the spring and leak. This is what it looks like. Pretty neat. We've sprung a leak. Not fun. But we got our additional epoxy mixed up. You're gonna wait about three or four minutes for it to start hardening and then apply it. Cause we tried it just mixing it and applying it. It got oozed right off. Okay, let's try the next one. No nastiness intended. Here we're gonna bring you guys on in. Oh, hey! We did it again! 
Hey -o. Okay, pull that one. Oh wait, hold on. You don't have any gloves on. You can hold this. No. Why'd you take your gloves off? Cause yeah, I need to touch your phone to zoom in. Oh. <laughs> Clip me on, buddy. Put, put me in. Put your safety harness on. Okay. Let me open the main thing. Here we go. I guess that is it. That will do. We've done did it. It's been about two weeks since we applied this product. We're gonna loop back now and kind of see how it's doing, um, how it did through our testing, and then also what we do differently. So I'll start with the first thing we would do differently. The first step of the epoxy is a two-step epoxy, and we would have mixed that up in smaller batches just to get a, a more even coat over the crack. It just cured so quickly that we were having a hard time covering at least this length of a crack. Yes, and then also, we would have applied it probably thicker too. So in smaller batches, we wouldn't have to be so messy like we were, like you just watch us kind of be a little messy. And we could apply it thicker over the exact area we wanted it. Because when that foam starts expanding, well, also we didn't realize that either. When you start putting that resin in those nipples, it starts expanding and it will push out onto that, uh, I guess, first layer of epoxy that we put on. So I think we would have also, did you say that? Let it dry longer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we would have let it dry longer. It says five to 10 minutes, if we recall, on the directions. And it felt like it just wasn't actually cured enough where it wasn't just pushing through. Yeah. So, so yeah, I would give it at least an hour. If you have the time, might as well let it cure as long as you can. So if you have any more questions about how this product worked, um, maybe how to apply it in your situation, leave it in the comment section. And then, um, yeah, I think overall we talked about it. Um, probably say this is an awesome product. Um, we tested it, and how long, how did we test it, John? So we tested it by putting a garden hose right outside of this crack and letting it run for about two hours straight and see if any water seeped in. And we were bone dry. Bone dry. Like the Euphrates River is becoming. And that is why it's an A minus. <laughs> because. A minus product. The minus only comes from the instructions. Yeah, just the mixture, the actual application time and how to apply the nipples to what size crack. Uh, Cause we did down in the bottom is really thin and didn't probably need nipples down there. Yeah. But overall, super satisfied. So like the video, if you found it helpful. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Ring that bell on our channel so you get all the reminders from all the cool videos we do and you can see our face more in your life. And also just share this video if somebody has a crack in their foundation or something that would apply because it is a very effective product. So, Seam. That's better. I think it's better.